Hi there, I'm Peter Russell from SuperTax. Welcome to another one of my video blogs. Today's discussion is a walkthrough of an example of a capital gain upon disposition of a rental property here in Canada. Now essentially, individuals get involved with rental properties to earn rental income and eventually earn a capital gain upon disposition of that rental property. Now, net rental income is generally your rental revenue earned less rental expenses. Rental expenses such as property taxes paid, mortgage interest paid, utilities and repairs and maintenance. Those are the general ones you're going to come across. Now, you can also take what is called CCA or Capital Cost Allowance. That is basically the write-off of the cost of your rental property over time. Now how we do this is we set up the asset in what is called a class. Now rental properties are generally put in class 1. For tax purposes here in Canada. Class 1 means that you are, decline, you, are, you are writing off the asset at a declining rate of 4% per year. Now here in Canada we have something called the half year rule which means you only take half, the cease, half of the depreciation in the first year that you generally would. So in this example if our rental property had a value of $300,000 then we'd take 2% the first year and then 4% on 300,000 less 2% for the second year. I'm going to show you how this works in my example because this this will help explain to you a topic which is called recapture which is involved in the calculation of the capital gain of a rental property. Now let's go visit my big board here where we have an example. Gains on rental properties. Okay for my example we're going to assume the taxpayer's name is John and John bought a rental property, like a house, somewhere, for $300,000. Let's assume it's, say, in Toronto. Okay, so he bought a house in Toronto and he started to rent it out in 2008. He paid $300,000 for that house. He incurred legals of $2,000 and land transfer tax of $4,000, giving him an adjusted cost base of that value, for example, of $306,000. Now, I told you you can take CCA on this rental property, but you can only take CCA on the portion related to the building. There's a land portion, a land portion relating to this property. So we're going to assume the land is worth 80, per, sorry, 20% of the 306,000, and the building or the actual home is worth 80%. So 80% building is $244,800, and the land portion is $61,200. Now, say for three years, John earned quite a bit of rental revenue, had minimal expenses, and he had plenty of rental income. So he decided to take CCA each of those three years. So the CCA he would have he would have earned or been able to deduct in 2008 would be four thousand one eight hundred ninety six dollars, which is essentially two percent of two forty four eight hundred. In 2009, it would increase to $9,596, which is basically $244,800 less $4,896 times 4%, which would give you 9596 And then we'd do the same thing in 2010 to get another deduction of $9,212. Now, I've said here, all three amounts taken for CCA adds up to $23,704. That is what's going to be called recapture. I'm going to tell you why. So he's John is going to end up selling this property in 2011 for $450,000. He's here in commissions, uh, here, sorry, he paid commissions of $22,500, paid legals of $2,000, net proceeds of $425,500 for this example. So that is definitely larger than the $306,000 he paid for that property. So he's definitely going to have a capital gain here. But he also has recapture. He deducted the CCA for 08 to 010. He now must take that amount back into income on line 126 of the tax return. $23,704. Now, he also has a capital gain to worry about here. He's got a capital gain on, on the land, which works out to $425,500 times 20% less 
our worked out value of his ACB for the land of $61,200, giving him a capital gain on this, calcul on this disposition of $23,900. Now for the building, we calculate the gain on the building. 425,500 times 80% less the ACB of the building portion, 80%. 244,800 gives you a capital gain on the building of $95,600. Now if I bend it down a little more, now we can see the taxable capital gain, which is, you add the two amounts together, 26,9 plus 95,6 times 50%, which works out to 59,750. That would be his taxable capital gain on the disposition of this rental property in 2011. So that is picked up on line 127, which is taxable capital gains of your T1 general Canadian income tax return. On top of that, you have the recapture that, that's being taken back into income, which is line 126 for $23,704. Now, assuming that our taxpayer for this example is in a high tax bracket of 46.41%, uh, let's assume he will pay 46.41% of these two amounts on top of his regular income on his tax return. All right, that's an example of how we come up with a capital gain on a disposition of a rental property and recapture involved. My next video, I'm gonna show you what happens when you don't make money on the sale of your rental property and you actually have what is called a terminal loss. So look out for that video. I hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions, send me an email at peter at supertax.ca or you can leave a note below. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.